Are we recording? Yes, we are. <laughs> Can you hear me? Hello, Hello Angela, how are you? Uh, all right. <laughs> plodding along, plodding along. Hello, Teresa, how are you? Hello, Teresa. Oh, I can hear you. Good. Hello. Hello, Susanna. Ah, <laughs> oh, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the um, Becton Community Centre where the Chinese Association situated and they were singing Chinese opera type song and I told them that I prefer a normal choir, a <laughs> quite normal. <laughs> so they told me on Tuesdays there's a choir practicing there if I'm interested. I love music and I enjoy singing, but I don't feel confident enough to sing on my own. I think my pitch finding is, um, isn't always accurate, but I do love to belt it out in the group. When I was diagnosed with um, Parkinson's disease, um, I was going to the hospital, Royal London Hospital, and uh, they discuss the nurse there discusses um, things with patients about what can be done to improve your lifestyle and uh, singing was one of the things my daughter said um, let's find you something to do in the community mum and um, so she said well you like singing i found a choir you could join so i came and i saw and i stayed and they kept saying to me when I retired in 2011, why don't you join a choir, Mum? You love singing, you're always singing. And she said, I found this one for you, Mum. It's just round the corner, you've got no excuse. <laughs> you've got to give it a try. These days, I'm really not very good at holding a tune um, on my own. If, if I've got people around me, fine, and then I can get confident and sort of really sing out but on my own it just just doesn't happen i love the community spirit that that's in the choir because we did so many performances in the community and the songs that they sing they are the songs that i love and they are easy to learn and so it's nothing hard in that choir. It's, it's the singing, it's the pleasure one gets from singing. And the songs can be most enjoyable. You do get a high when you sing. If you do a song that's, that you enjoy, that comes off successfully, it is most enjoyable, I think. The good thing about the choir is I've got to know the neighbours who live just next street to me. And also, I made new friends and plus develop to develop my voice and to be part of community exercise. Oh, it's definitely meeting up with other people as well, um, because that was so much fun to, you know, just share views, hear what other people had to say, just in our bits of chit chat before and after, um, as well as the interaction during the singing, where, uh, and particularly when we were trying to do harmonies. <laughs> Initially, people were saying it would possibly be a bit like Hazard or bird flu. It might be serious, but it won't be too bad. And then all the people were saying, oh, it's not that serious, it'll go anytime. 
because the lockdown officially started on my birthday, which is 23rd of March, mm. so I'll never forget that. And I remember saying, um, we'll be lucky if we're through this by next Christmas. I was in hospital for uh, nine days. Yes, nine days. And it was a terrible time for me. Couldn't breathe. Oh, couldn't walk properly. Oh. And coughing, cough, and cough. Oh, terrible cough. And the nurses and the doctors have to work very hard, very hard, very hard, night and day. And I was able to breathe again. Uh, there's, a, there's a guy that was helping me fi fix some, my window frames. And I said, would you mind wearing a mask? He said, no, I don't. I don't believe in this. It's, it's just some sort of government induced thing. So I was a bit in a bit of a dilemma, really. I wanted the, the windows fixed. And he's still not turning up certain times. Um, and I'm, I've got to sort of stand there and help him. Thinking, well, you know, what if he's carrying it? It was quite evident that there was something very serious going on in China. Um, and yeah, I uh, still think it was just astonishingly stupid that we didn't close our borders straight away, like sensible people did, like bless her, Jacinda Ardern, she's my role model, I mean, of, you know, how to be a person in charge. I find the, this particular virus limits our freedom, our choice, and not very convenient. When you go out, you can't go to the toilets, you know, even in McDonald's. People don't realise the problems. I did actually have, I mean, I must say I was quite impressed because I kept getting texts um, from Newham Council and the GP saying, if you've got any problems, don't hesitate to contact us, blah, blah, blah. Help that. had some wonderful help from um, neighbours. There's a neighbour, there's a sort of a neighbourhood association, and um, we had a leaflet through the door to say, "Look, if you want any shopping done, let us know." And so that was wonderful. Uh, these lovely people, two, three times a week, they nip over to our local shop. They delivered a lot of food and came every week which was great. I find them in East Ham Library, they're very, very cooperative and always happy to help me. And yeah, new, um, I say hats off to them really for the stuff they do put on for folk and tell people about. And, you know, um, it's just a question of keeping in touch um, like with the libraries and things like that to find out about stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, I think Newham have done us proud. I think I've just been doing more of um, what I did occasionally, you know, because there's time. I have to say, watching television all the time. <laughs> I try not to do it in the day. All these boxes that had packets and packets of old photographs in, I spent five weeks sorting those out and putting them into ring binder folders and labelling them so that um, yeah, they were all they were all there. So it was a very nice um, walk down memory lane to see all those old photographs and put them into albums and whatnot. Because I want to do decluttering as well. <laughs> so it's so much rubbish everywhere. I think it's so much rubbish. I think we all have rubbish. I'm making pasta. I've I've painted. We. We had an awful lot to do on this house when we moved in and so we've been here for just on four years and I'm very happy I, with myself in regards to going to the Central Park for exercise and meeting people there and seeing the children playing and admiring the beauty of the trees and that. At the very beginning I welcomed the opportunity to have a clear out. Um, and 
they clot and it was a golden opportunity and I achieved a loss of what I planned then. Um, so just, you know, again, binge, binge, watch, binge watching box, uh, box sets and stuff like that. In the summer when the weather is good, so that's from about June, July, I do go for a walk every day and it was very quiet. There's not many people around. And then when the weather gets worse or just winter sets in, then I get less outside, but I have got a balcony which I can exercise in my balcony. However, I think for people who don't have lots and lots of uh, resources and arts and crafts equipment and music equipment and TVs and that Wi-Fi, it must be a nightmare. So I'd be very, very sorry for people stuck in a flat, um, you know, or with young children trying to cope with it. Uh, but also it has been a very dark time for some people. Lots of people have died in awful pain, painful circumstances without access to family to, to, to say goodbye to them and family being able to bereave them. And it's been most the most awful time for some people. Most horrendous time. I'm not, you know, a hundred percent, you know, knowledge of the zooming thing, but I do a little, I can do a little bit of it. I like it. Because that's the only way we can get, you know, we can see each other and have discussions and have any little program at all. You know, it's only to Zoom in. Yes. So I appreciate the Zoom so much, very much. So aren't we all thankful that there's such a thing as Zoom, which we've never heard of before. Um, yes, our church services are online on Zoom. Um, we see the family occasionally on Zoom. And uh, I've just started doing um, an online course on the history of English language on Zoom. Got a couple of grandchildren now, so we have to do things on um, Skype. And the kids can't really, even though they, they know how to use this kit, and they, they, they just find it easy. It's not the same as, um, you know, th throwing a ball at them and th games of catch and running around the garden, catch me and all this sort of stuff. So when I first learned, it was a bit hard. But once you get the basic and I find that it, it is fine, I can learn, I can use more. And I even using the Zoom meeting to be able to talk to my children, one in England, one in Hong Kong. This is now, you know, an established method by which I can annoy people worldwide. <laughs> I consider myself very lucky to be able to use Zoom and the computer of my age, because in my generation, we never had anything like this, and it's all double the problem in education. strange because obviously I'm just listening to you and singing along so there's this lone voice in the house <laughs> yes uh, fortunately you know you're nice and clear <laughs> it's nothing like the real thing is it but no. um, but it is nice to have had a day in the week where I know I'm going to see some different faces you know even if we don't talk a lot just hearing the odd conversation and seeing different faces yeah, that's been nice really. About the film ourselves, each one, I yes. found that very challenging. Yes, I know. And uh, I found also that it was very good, that it made me recognise I could do things which I never thought I could. Going to the choir to face each other, sing together as a group, is much, much more practical and enjoyable. Then on Zoom, I, I admit, in <laughs> Zoom, it's okay when we were doing the um, voice training in the beginning, but then when you go, go down to singing songs, you're singing on your own, it's no fun. I do quite like having the Zoom session because it, it is, we do have some singing and I 
really do appreciate the opportunity to say if anyone else and converse. So it means we are keeping in touch and the momentum going. So I still value them, and despite everything, I look forward to them. What I would like them to learn really is all what is happening now. We are in a serious time and we can't just take everything for granted. Gosh, that is a hard question. Um, I hope we'll have learned to sort of genuinely appreciate um, what we might think of as normal life. Um, and appreciated a need for um, each other in the sort of social context. I would say that I would I, possibly it is something we can learn. We can learn something from it, like the importance of controlling viruses and and researching and being more aware and better prepared for them. Yeah. Being with other people, I think that I don't think people really realise how important that is for them. You have to have faith, and you have to have hope and love. That's that's all. I always believe that that you can go through any difficulty, and and also I think we all have to encourage people to be positive. As I like use the song, smile more. S smile is is really the best. Thing to communicate with anyone and we don't smile that enough we don't smile enough or laugh singing no <laughs> can i persuade you to do this no condensation within the mask doesn't really help indoors is probably okay a good idea. i found this on the web for condensation within the mask <laughs> doesn't really help. check it out thank you <laughs> and um there weren't many there oh here's the cat again there weren't many people but after a few weeks several of these groups the three groups that's the camera it's just at the top of your screen so oh look yeah at it's on yes that, 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 that's it just no don't cover it just wave at me look at look at uh, i'm going to stand up so look at me oh, yeah i can see your head i can see your face i can hear her i can hear her on the phone but i can't hear her i'm ah! <laughs>